Hey guys, Spotify announced that they will shake the music industry with new direct music deals for artists. And it has all to do with this company here. Let's talk about it. So to kick this off, I need to explain to you on a basic level how music companies nowadays are fighting for the rights of existence in our society. So this is all based about the basic principle of action and reaction. In this case, in music, we can speak of action when people are making music. In this case, the artist. And people who listen to the music, everybody else, can be called the reaction. This reaction can, for the artist, be measured in many different ways, like fame, recognition, honor, but also money. And in all of these elements, this is where the music companies come in play. So for an artist, in order to get their music heard by as many people as possible, music companies have a huge network. And they are working year over year to expand that as much as possible, in order to represent their artists in every possible corner of the planet that seems very interesting for them. They have also streamlined that whole process in order for them to get gigs and performances at venues and in order to get them music performances through media outlets like commercials or movies. So over the years many music companies had huge success with this formula but in that time only five of them had the opportunity to rise above the others and these five companies were called the majors. These companies really had enough money to buy up every other music publisher, every other record label in that time to expand their business into ways and into music genres that seemed interesting for them and that could bring more revenue into the company. But yeah, there were some music companies that had such a unique identity and such a unique network that they chose to stay independent from the huge network and the huge money banks that the major companies could offer. So over the years, the music industry was evolved around a very fixed model. And that was with the record labels and the music publishers as the center of it all. And at the one end, we had the musicians, the lyricists, the composers, all the artists on one end that brought music into the companies, the record labels and the publishers, and they distributed towards music distributors like radio stations, television stations, movie publishers, and many more. So then in the late 80s and early 90s, technology started to kick in. Music production became rapidly more easy for everybody to create studio-like environments and studio-like music back in your own room. And on top of that, you also had the rise of the internet, which also shifted the whole way how we experience music in our personal environments. We all had to use Discmans or Walkmans and listen to music through physical carriers like tapes and CDs before. But then it shifted all towards MP3 files and MP3 players became very popular. I can still remember the first one that I got. So even though that big shift already happened and people moved on from physical music files towards uh, digital music files, music companies stubbornly hold on to their vision to yeah, distribute their music mainly through physical carriers. And this brought the huge big era of yeah, music piracy and illegal downloads. And many platforms like Azureus, LimeWire, Napster, they flourished around that time. So luckily many music companies saw that they made a very enormous mistake and they had a huge decline of music revenues and a huge decline of music sales. And they had to admit that they were defeated by the internet piracy companies that were flourishing through digital sales. This caused a major shift for them to market their music not through physical carriers, but only through digital downloads and digital sales. And one company cleverly hopped into that whole new focus that was created by music companies, and that was Apple. Around that time, they also announced their new phone, the iPhone, and they explicitly marketed their music platform as the primary way of downloading music from the big labels and that platform was called iTunes. But around the time of iTunes there was another big company that was on the rise. It was a Swedish company called Spotify and their philosophy was entirely different. Rather than downloading music and owning music, their philosophy was based on that we wanted to listen to music. So their concept was very simple. You pay a fixed price and then you don't own the music, you don't have to download it, but you get access without any limits to the whole catalog 
that they own and you can listen to it wherever and whenever you want. So, a different approach. So this whole new concept proved to be very successful. Spotify started to grow and expand at a very enormous rate and many new companies on the rise were starting to get successful as well. Think of Deezer or think of even Google with their free video platform YouTube where people start to listen to music at. And Apple saw that and this started all a very known thing in the music industry called the streaming wars. And Apple wanted to join and they started their own platform into it and that was called Apple Music. So I think it shouldn't be a very big surprise that Apple would shortly become one of the biggest players in the streaming wars and that is mostly because Apple already had a very broad and loyal customer base around the world. Furthermore, they already had iTunes in their possession which is basically a very huge music library of many many songs. So this is the part where the whole number game comes in play. At the moment of this video, Spotify has a paid subscriber base of 73 million subscribers that pay each month for their access to their premium service. But Apple Music has a subscriber base of 40 million paid subscribers. And the biggest twist of them all is in the growth numbers. In the last two months already, Apple grew with 11% and they are already forecasted to grow above the subscriber based amount of Spotify within a year. So that is a pretty huge deal. And another point that is also very important is the catalog amount of both companies. Apple Music has through its iTunes library already access to 45 million songs compared to Spotify's 35 million. So Spotify really has some catching up to do. And you can definitely say that they can really feel the hot air already beneath their feet. This is the part where the whole iPhone comes in play. You can already guess in 2018 that the whole hype of the iPhone is already a bit gone. And that the main shift of Apple has gone to Apple Music. It's rapidly becoming the biggest revenue and income generating division for the whole brand. So that means that Spotify really has to do something to innovate and to disrupt the whole market again. And that is something that they already did before in 2008 by starting their whole streaming company. So why not shaking up the whole music business model again? So that's what they did. They gave artists now the opportunity to upload their music directly to Spotify in order to get 50% of their revenue and 100% of their royalties directly without any intervention of a music publisher, a music label or any digital aggregator like TuneCore or CD Baby. So that's pretty innovative. And this is the reason why. Because in this way, you as an artist can also bypass the whole digital aggregator stuff and the whole music publisher stuff that really is demanded right now in order to distribute your money through all these platforms like Deezer, YouTube, Amazon Music, things like that. And you can already directly upload it to Spotify in order for them to exclusively own your music. So in other ways, you get more money out of it and they get a unique experience and they get unique music in their catalog only. So what does that mean for us as music listeners? First of all, I think that we will see a lot of new music and a lot of new unheard artists that are now able to upload their music directly without any intervention of a digital aggregator or music publisher. And next to that, we will see more creativity and more creative takes on the whole music creation. Almost the same thing that we see at the moment with the whole YouTube community as well. So I think this will be a very new interesting chapter in the world of streaming wars. Okay, this was it. I really hope that you liked this topic. If you do, give a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate that. And see you next week with a new post. Ciao!